This is episode 11 of Learn Grandma 2. Welcome back. And today I'm going to continue what I started last week. And that happened quite a bit already, but today it's really more or less like part two to last week's episode one on executors. So today, episode 11 <laughs> in Learn Grandma 2. And I want to show you executor options and special masters. I'm going to start with executor options. I'm just going to walk you through a few of them and then for the rest, you just have to play around with it and consult the manual. Like last week, you know, we set up a few executors. That's what I showed you if you want to follow along. Find last week's show file in the video description as a free download. And here we go. Let's just go into an executor. I'm going to open up the full size executors. The options should be pretty much the same. But one thing you should have noticed is that um, the type of content that you can, for example, assign to a button executor is slightly different. Uh, so I'm just going to go with these executors up here, the full size executors. And all you want to do really is switch from the function tab over to the options tab. And this is where the fun really begins. This is part of the problem why it's so hard to learn Granime 2 because you see all these options. I mean, it's crazy, right? So these are so many different options. I can't even explain them to you, to be honest. Um, but let's just go through them. And for the rest, seriously, go and consult the goddamn manual. You will have to do a lot of reading, a lot of trying out. All right. So this is again, a table view, and you can see different uh, columns of playbacks here. And what I'm actually gonna do after this episode is go back to the manual and read up on it uh, a little more. One of the lighting designers that I know, um, he actually says that he rereads the whole manual every year. So even professionals who've been at this thing or have been working with this console for years, uh, even they reread the manual quite a bit to just discover new functionalities. This is one of the first columns and you can see auto start, auto stop. Now what does this do? Essentially, if we keep this on, what will happen is, so now if I turn up this executor, you can see it's starting and you can tell by the blue line. So this is actually active right now. If we go off, off twice, you can see that this is actually running. So if I turn this way down again, it's off again because now you can see that the blue line disappeared from this cube playback. So you can see this is auto stop and auto start. If I go in here and change this to just auto start, then what will happen is if I turn up the fader, then it will start, but it won't turn off anymore if I turn it way down. Now, to be honest, I can't really tell you what a good option is here. Um, in general, I guess that anytime something is done automatically for you, it adds complexity, be, uh, complexity but um, in this case, it's actually a good thing because after working with Granime 2 for a while, you sort of expect this behavior where you can just fade something in and that piece of content will actually play back. So auto start is always a good idea, especially if you don't really think about it. You just uh, you know, drag up a fader. Um, that's a really helpful feature. Auto stop. I mean, you can do this however you like. You can see down here, there's even an auto stop off time. I mean, in that case, your executor off time would actually be applied, I believe, to this executor. We won't really be able to see it here, I think. Let's just... We well, can tell by this cue that it's actually slowly fading out. So, you know, you can actually apply this even to auto stop. Auto fix is also not something really interesting. So if I turn this up, then this executor is actually fixed. This is really cool, especially if you're working with multiple pages, uh, because like that, um, whatever you have running will actually always be visible no matter which page you're on. Different options here still, uh, just go to the manual and consult the manual. Uh, another important thing is these two. So um, in the world of lighting technology, if you have multiple 
um, signals going to the same address. So let's say you have two sequences that are defined on the same set of fixtures. Then there's actually different methods of merging that DMX data. And you can see here that we have HTTP and LTP. These are the most um, well known and this stands for highest text precedence. So whatever value is highest, that's what you will actually see. And that's something that's probably the most intuitive. Um, when you, for example, mix dimmer values, you kind of want the brightest to always be um, visible. When it comes to position values, for example, um, we don't really perceive 360 degrees of, of pan to be so much greater uh, than 180. So there's not really that relation of one value being um, you know, greater than the other. So in that case, it might actually be unintuitive and you would rather want the LTP, latest takes precedence. In that case, whatever value was set the last um, will actually be applied to that part of your rig. These are sort of complicated though. Uh, make sure to read up on that. What's important though is that um, there's another option here that comes into play off on overwritten. So that essentially means if you turn this off, then um, your executors won't automatically turn off. Um, and I don't have a good example for this, but if you have multiple executors sort of running content on the same set of fixtures, uh, what you will often see is that whenever you turn up a second executor um, that outputs something onto your fixtures, um, that the previous executor would, will actually be turned off. And that's this feature right here. So essentially what it does is sort of make sure that you always only have one piece of content running on a certain selection of fixtures that can actually be useful to kind of reduce the complexity of what parts of your show are actually outputting onto a certain um, you know, part of your rig. But... To me personally, it was another one of these hidden functionalities that weren't immediately obvious to me and that really um, was very frustrating. So I could talk about these for quite some time because there are so many options and I'm sure you're tired of it already. Just go to the goddamn manual and look it up, all right? One thing that's really important, once you have certain settings figured out for yourself, what you wanna do is go to save default sequence options just like that. And now if you have a new assignment, for example, a new sequence, what you want to do over to the options, you can actually go ahead and load these default sequence options. And then, um, you know, your defaults will be here already. They will actually be here once you create that new sequence. But if you kind of switch something around, you're like, hey, I want to go back to my default, just go load default sequence options. So just like last week where you can actually find a good key and fader assignment for your executors and then reuse that by copying it. In this case, what you can do is you can find a good set of options for your executors, set it as a default, and then make use of that in all the other sequences. So on to a more interesting subject when it comes to executors. Uh, and a tool that you will really, really love, trust me. So go to an executor slot that's empty or that you don't need anymore. Um, and then take a look at these down here. We have group masters and special masters. Let's first take a look at group masters. So we can select one of the groups that we created, in this case, the LED bars. And this is now a master for the LED bars. So if I turn this, sequence up over here that sets a value on all our fixtures and I turn this group master down, see what happens. Even though this outputs over here, I can individually set the brightness level for this one group. And that's a really, really good thing because like that, I have a very fine grain control over what is being output. Now I've seen different versions of that. One is um, to just use a group master to sort of fine tune uh, your output. Um, also maybe limit the brightness that uh, gets sent out to uh, the different parts of your rig. So it's like equally bright or has like a really moody atmosphere. But I've also seen um, people use um, or sort of define effects on like all the fixtures. 
and then use the master faders to actually apply the effect to different parts of the rig by sort of turning up the group master on different parts of that rig. So these group masters are really, really versatile. They're a really powerful, great tool. The other group of masters is summarized in this special master uh, section. And here what we have is um, different kind of masters. And again, just look in the manual for what all of these are doing. It's, it's a really, it's an endless journey of learning, friends. And then these down here actually are really, really interesting. So the speed master is your best friend when it comes to effects. So what we can do here, for example, is um, use this for a special master and then just call this speed or positions. Let's call this pan tilt. Now let's find out what we can do with this. What we have here is an effect and that runs at a certain speed when it comes to pan tilt. If we click on these lines, then we can actually open up the content editor. And over here, what we can do, uh, we have a tilt effect line. We can go over to speed group, right click into it and go pan tilt. Now watch what happens. I can now individually control the pan and tilt of this effect while the dimmer speed is still the same. And that's really cool. That's something that I can only really, really highly recommend. Go ahead and create a speed master that you always use on your positions and then another speed master on your dimmer effects. Like that, you have a really cool way of controlling the mood of an effect or rather of all of your effects that you assign to this one speed master. It's, it's fantastic. It's the, the level of control over the mood of the lighting that you really want to have. Now, the other type of special masters that you find in here are rate masters. And rate masters are something that uh, actually can manipulate the playback speed of your sequences. So let's just turn this off. Let's see. And I don't have a good example. So let me just say that if you have a sequence that actually has timing information in there, what you want to do is go to speed and then go to rate, and then you can set a rate master. Again, you can also rename this rate master, just go to, I don't know, main. And like that, you can actually make your sequences faster or slower. And that's the tip of the iceberg for special masters. These are the two most important speed masters for your effects and then rate masters if you make heavy use of sequences. For the rest of all these options and the special masters, please go ahead and consult the manual. Um, this is really an ongoing effort. As I said, uh, you really want to read certain sections of this manual over and over again because you will discover something new every time you go through it. So with that, we're at the end of this very episode. Um, I hope you learned something and I hope you discovered two new important tools for your toolbox in building great shows. Now it's really important to keep in mind that you can put a ton of effort like I did into learning every single one of these options, or you can actually go ahead and create visual content to learn how to build a show and also find your own style. So these are the two trade-offs here. Um, go crazy on like all the technical details or really um, use this as a creative tool. And with that wealth of options and possibilities and little snippets and tools here and there that this console offers, it's really easy to get lost in the technicality. So, you know, keep in mind what you want to have out of this console and then try to get there as straight as possible. So thanks for watching from my YouTube channel, but also from inside the Facebook group where all of us learners meet and you can actually ask questions. So if you get stuck, if you wanna ask a question, if you wanna boast about your progress, which nobody has done so far, then be the first to do that. Post a picture of your progress and join us through the link in the video description. Uh, I actually did write a text for this part, but I don't like it. So I'm just gonna say bye. Bye. <laughs>